I'll take a bit of a sidetrack in this video, have a look at using Sigfox for connecting my uh, PyTrack uh, board up and getting GPS. Uh, I'll see how that works, uh, what sort of uh, uh, coverage I've got, and uh, then I'll get back into Laura Wan stuff until I get towards the end of this project, and I'll have a look at uh, NVIOT as well. So looking at the code that you need for connecting to Sigfox, again, I'm using the PyCom Low Pi 4 um, device, uh, which has built in Sigfox. It actually uses um, much the same sort of frequencies as uh, LoRa. Um, so I go to the PyCom site and uh, tutorials, examples, network Sigfox. Uh, there's a good example here. See the code? There isn't much to it. I'll show you it in my actual uh, project in a sec. And then uh, this also has a good rundown on what you need to do at the actual Sigfox uh, services to register your device mm -hmm. and uh, start using your device seeing uh, the data come in. So that's under docspycom.io tutorials network Sigfox. Mm -hmm. Now looking in uh, VS Code in my actual project. Uh, so again this is the project that I used in the previous video. Uh, it's called uh, Sigfox is a project name. Uh, I've also got it up in GitHub if you want to see it. So I'll put the link to the GitHub information uh, in the description for this video. Uh, so I do all the imports. So this is main I'm looking at first. I'm doing all the imports. One thing I've set up here is, and this is what we'll be looking at, is the Sigfox helper.py uh, library. So I import the Sigfox helper uh, from that library. Uh, I'll, this is where I just do the general setup. I talked about this in the in the previous video, but the ones that are specific to Sigfox, you see here, I'm making an instance of the class of Sigfox Helper, which was imported up here, and calling it SFH. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is calling SFH info, which gives me info about uh, that Sigfox um, object. And that info includes what the device ID is, and uh, as you saw in the in GitHub, uh, sorry, in uh, the PyCom information example, we use the device information for registering the device with Sigfox. Uh, then again, as I covered in the previous video, uh, I'm using the PyTrack board, so I'm uh, turning off the power for things I'm not using. Um, Again, in the previous video, I talked about how I get the GPS data, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm putting that GPS data into a thing called GPS payload. And then we're calling the Sigfox helper, SFH, dot send with that GPS payload. So uh, we'll now have a look at this uh, library here, because that's doing really the work for, for setting up and uh, sending the Sigfox data. So in Sigfox Helper, I set that up as a as a class. So we saw in the main where I declared uh, the SFH uh, class object based on the Sigfox Helper class. Uh, the only things I need to import for this uh, library was uh, the Sigfox from the network. And that's a nice thing that PyCom does is uh, all the interfaces, including uh, LoRa, Wi-Fi, Sigfox, uh, are declared as part of the network uh, library. Makes it very consistent. I import a socket and I also import the spin ASCII uh, library for displaying info about the Sigfox connection. So in the Sigfox helper when you initialize it, it sets it up with these uh, parameters. So uh, setting up as mode Sigfox and uh, this is the 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 geographic zone you're in. I'm in USA, so I put in RCZ2 uh, to make sure it's using the correct frequencies for a, for a USA user. And uh, the result of that is stored in a local Sigfox uh, property as part of this class. If I call it info, it gets the device ID by calling the Sigfox ID method. If I want to get the pack number, so this is the um, 
agreement that Pycom has with Sigfox for registering devices. So um, you get one year free uh, registration with Sigfox for the device. So that PAC number uh, helps identify what that uh, agreement is that Pycom has with uh, Sigfox. So this just shows that number. You, I don't think you need it. Um, and then finally, I also print out the the frequencies it's using. So that just sort of is to double check that I set up this zone correctly and I'm seeing the frequencies I'd expect in the US, which is about 101 uh, megahertz band. Then the final method here is where it actually sends the the information we saw in the main where I sent the GPS information as the payload. So to do this, I create a new socket. So it's a Sigfox uh, socket, it's a raw socket. I set blocking to true for that socket. And I set some options. So I'm going to make it a transmit only uh, uh, socket. So I turn off the receive option. And then I just do a send on the payload. And that's all you need to do to send through Sigfox. It's a pretty simple protocol. So let's go back up to main and let's try running it. So I've got a my device connected. If I click on uh, upload, uploads these libraries and starts running on the device. So what we should see here is it's given me the device ID, pack number, and the Sigfox frequencies that it's using. So these are the US ones, 902 megahertz, 905. And what this does is it, it's using my GPS routine, so I just indicate whenever it's got a good GPS location coming back, once it gets 10 of them, uh, then it finds the most often returned and uses that as my current GPS location. So you see it's calculated here. And then it's sent the, the information out. Uh, so before I could get any uh, transmissions going to Sigfox, I also had to set up a account on Sigfox. So you go to sigfox.com. Actually, all the instructions are out there in that uh, that page I showed you just before on the PyCom site for the example. Uh, but make yourself an account. Uh, then you can go through and register your device. Uh, you can pick up the device ID from the code as I showed you. Okay, so that's what I've done here. And you can see here when I get in there, uh, based on looking at my device, I can see uh, uh, messages that are coming through. Uh, and I can also do things like uh, go through and set up callbacks, uh, which is uh, ways of uh, sending the data on from Sigfox to uh, where you want to process that data. So I've actually set up two callbacks for my experiments here with Sigfox one is uh, just a straight uh, sending data to a mailbox. Uh, so whenever a, a message comes through to Sigfox, I can see it in my mail. And also uh, I sent the data on to a, a, a URL. Uh, it's actually that uh, Firebase uh, functions uh, endpoint to receive data coming in from Sigfox. It's also the same location that sends receives information coming in from LoRaWAN and it will be the same one that will receive information from NBIoT. So I sort of have one point where all three of these communication methods can send data to. So that's all set up. Um, Now I wanted to test whether Sigfox gave me better uh, coverage than LoRaWAN. Again, I'm going to be using this up on my boat. So first I tried it uh, from my house. I already knew from uh, Sigfox has some coverage maps that it may not be great. But as you can see here, the only way I could get uh, Sigfox uh, transmissions working from my house was actually to paste uh, the, the board and the aerial up in my window, which... Uh, is not the best way uh, so I was getting sort of not great coverage from my my house hey I'm at the lake I'm on my boat and I'm doing Sigfox wireless testing with my IoT device so I'm using a PyCon board it's getting a GPS coordinate every 10 minutes and then should be sending it through Sigfox 
Uh, so hopefully I've got some local connectivity. Like I said, so when uh, Sigfox is uh, got coverage, I see the messages come in to my inbox. You see an example here. Uh, but when I was doing it from home, it was just sporadic. Uh, I wouldn't see uh, maybe 25% uh, of the messages act actually get through even when I was had the aerial located outside. Uh, from my boat, I didn't see any. So it tells me I've got a problem. Uh, I probably can't use Sigfox, uh, at least for... Uh, my uh, boat monitor, uh, seeing I don't have any coverage there. So both LoRaWAN and uh, Sigfox won't have coverage. Uh, so later on, on in this series, uh, towards the end of the project, I'm also going to look at uh, NB-IoT, which uses cellular as the IoT connection mechanism. I'm expecting that to work, but uh, I need to try it out first. <laughs> 